Hello everyone, Dr. Jason Pang here from Sydney, Australia. Today we'll be talking about the oral microbiome and systemic health, how the microbes in our mouth can affect the, the health of our mouth, but also the systemic health of our bodies. We've had a pretty good education of the last few years, how the, the COVID virus can affect our immune system, increase inflammation in our body and have pretty severe consequences both short term and and even after the, the virus has, has left our bodies. So it shouldn't be too much of a surprise to hear about how viruses, bacteria and fungus in our mouth can, can really affect both our, our mouth health and, and overall health. Let's start with a disclosure. I am a practicing dentist in Sydney, Australia, a lecturer on advanced technologies like cone beam radiography, ozone, lasers, and so on. Uh, I am a double master's in uh, laser dentistry, both from Slovenia and from Rome. Uh, I am the Australian master trainer for Fatona, the, the, the dental laser that we use, and a member of the American Academy of Oral Systemic Health, which is very much the topic that we're talking about today. A clinical advisor for the Lichen Protocol, which is one of the ways that we assess the oral microbiome of the mouth and decide on what protocols we can use to help improve the, the health of our mouth, reduce the bacteria that, that's in there and create, really create a shift to, to create health for us. So as, as dentists, you you know, we're often thought of as the people that, that really just pull teeth out. Um, and certainly a good part of our working career is fixing people's teeth, drilling uh, and filling those teeth, doing, doing the cleans for people. But uh, we can also really improve a person's self-esteem by using something like this, which is removable. This is a, a, called the snap on smile. Uh, but really boost a person's confidence uh, as soon as the, they put on a device like this. This is something that that's more permanent implants, uh, which allows a patient to eat and chew and function um, and really, um, you know, make them a, a, a functioning member of, of society again. But more and more, we are, uh, are trying to be oral healers so we can use lasers and light uh, to, to treat cavities in the mouth. This is the, the dental laser without anesthetic being used to remove decay uh, around the teeth. You know, we don't have to touch the teeth. It doesn't have the the same sensation, um, the, the pressure. We don't have damage um, by shattering the, the enamel of, of the teeth. We can use that very gently with the laser. But at the same time, we treat facial pain like um, burning mouth syndrome, oral mucositis, which happens with, with mouth cancers, fibromyalgia. We can help teeth move more quickly in orthodontics uh, and many, many things like that. Certainly, in our, in our working lives, uh, tooth decay is, is the main problem. And the WHO considers that tooth decay is the, is the, the most common non-communicable disease worldwide. Um, I'll talk about how I think that's not entirely true, and we can certainly see how uh, the bacteria can be passed from, from parent to child, but certainly it is the leading cause of tooth decay um, and, 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 um, and breakdown of teeth and, and eventually can lead to tooth loss. Periodontal disease is gum disease, and around 19% of the world has that in a very severe form. 50% of the world globally, but some 80% of, of people will have some sort of, of gingivitis or, or some sort of um, inflammation of, of the gums. And that can lead to uh, pain, tooth mobility, uh, and eventually tooth loss um, in the advanced cases as well. And all of these are really a, a biofilm problem. So we have the bacteria that are growing in the mouth, um, but that's not only on the on, on the teeth themselves, they grow underneath the gums, they're, they're on, on the cheeks, uh, tonsils. So that can lead to halitosis, which is the bad breath, oral lichen planus, those, those white marks that we see on, on the cheeks, and potentially other things like, like oral cancers. 
So how are we doing in general? Well, this, this report came out in 2020 in Victoria, Australia. So some 43% of, of our kids uh, uh, have some si sign of tooth decay. More than 50% of adults uh, have some sort of gum disease and, and they pick up 14 cases of oral cancer a week. So really as, as a first world country, we're, we're not doing that well. Or, or certainly we, we would expect to be uh, ahead of, of a lot of the other countries and surprisingly, we, we're not that far ahead. So why does all of this happen? Well, it starts off with the, the bacteria in the mouth. And of course, there's many, many different types and they can grow very well in that environment. Uh, we have the, the tooth and the pockets that are around around the teeth where, where they can they can grow. Uh, we feed them um, sugars and carbohydrates, which which they can use to make acid. Um, and then the, but the, the bacteria are very adept at using proteins to you know, create byproducts, which which then they, they can they can consume other organic acids, which um, can cause problems in in the mouth. And of course, if we leave the bacteria on there for too long, and we aren't cleaning them well enough, or don't have uh, professional cleans in, in within a certain time frame, then the the, the bacteria will build up and um, you know grow very very thick uh, and very protective of each other, and and so it can cause more problems. So how does our body try and combat that? Well, it's, it's our immune system. The, the saliva has its has its own um, uh, minerals uh, and cytokines that will allow it to try and combat the bacteria that they're in the mouth. But you know, this is a it's an ongoing dynamic process that that happens, and and it's it's a continual uh, process. So. How are we doing um, in general? Well, what we what we know is that certainly in Australia, um, any adults over fifteen will have around about eleven uh, teeth that are decayed, missing, or filled, and that's despite access to um, to toothpaste and to fluoridated water. Uh, these are adults that are that are brushing uh, at least once a day. Uh, and then have access to fluoridated water. So it's it's really not about um, the the fluoride that's in the water. That is insufficient to to prevent the the problems that that we're seeing uh, in in our mouths. When we look at the rate of periodontal disease, it has improved um, over um, uh, over the years, but. If we look at from 2004 to 2017, we can still see, um, and that's partly due to Im improved recording and measuring of, of um, the disease process, but 30% of adults will have some sort of, of gum problems. As far as um, um, tooth loss is concerned, um, that has improved over the years. We're, we're seeing, we're losing less teeth people uh, retaining their teeth and we have less adults that will have complete tooth loss and have to wear full dentures and things like that. Of course, there are many reasons for that and uh, there's differences between social economic areas and public and, and uh, private health, but certainly uh, the differences are surprisingly not that, that big. And as adults in general, uh, about a quarter to a, a third of people will, will say that they have problems eating, that they have toothaches, or that they're certainly uncomfortable with with their their appearance and and don't like the, the way that they look. So when we talk about the the bacteria that's in the mouth, we know that there's well over seven hundred species that that colonize the mouth. Each individual will have some two to three hundred different species. Um, but many of them cannot even be, be cultured. So you don't even have to to uh, to grow the bacteria any, anymore. You, we have advanced techniques like 16S ribosomal RNA uh, techniques, which, which can identify the bacteria. And so there's many bacteria that, that don't follow the traditional uh, ability to, to be cultured, but we can still identify many of them. And so we know that there tends to be a... Uh, a certain back number of bacteria that are that are common to all of us, but the majority of people have very very different um, bacteria. 
we break them down into what we consider commensals and opportunistic. So the opportunistic are the ones that take take advantage of of of, of being in a, in an environment that they like and and cause uh, health problems. So these are the pathogenic bacteria, viruses, parasites, uh, and and so on. Most of the most of them exist in the mouth as a biofilm. So they that's a, a thick layer. Um, but then they can break off and, and float around and travel to, to other parts of the body, as you'll soon see. So I'll, I'll show you. This is this is um, the buildup on the on the teeth. And as they thicken and become more protective, they form this, this matrix uh, layer. And that allows the biofilm to grow and, and mature. And as it thickens, it becomes more protective of those deeper layers and you have uh, more and more pathogenic type of bacteria uh, being able to to sustain itself, and then that's when you can have other parasites like amoeba uh, enter that environment and then cause uh, additional problems. So it used to be that we th we thought that all plaque had the potential to to cause disease, and so the thinking was to mechanically remove that plaque and that calculus, and if we did that, that we would help to, to prevent disease. The, the problem was that we, we didn't quite get that right. And um, we used to say, oh, yes, that's okay that, that, you, that you're bleeding. Um, uh, but bleeding in, in the mouth is, is really a sign that, that there, is, there is a problem. And that's because we didn't have a, a complete understanding of, of periodontal disease. But now we know that certainly clean doesn't always equal to healthy. So on... On the left-hand side, you can see there isn't a lot of buildup on, on, on the person's teeth, but almost every single tooth there is, is bleeding. And so when you see that kind of bleeding in the mouth, we know that really isn't, isn't healthy. So the WHO, as early as 2003, said that poor health is, is related to major chronic uh, diseases. And the worse that the, the the health of the mouth is, the worse that the, the those overall conditions are. And we certainly know that cardiovascular disease, oral cancers, diabetes, stroke, pregnancy outcomes, and lung conditions are definitely related to uh, the, the the microbes that, that are in the mouth. But if we look at some of the the latest papers, we can see that it's also related to chronic kidney disease, cirrhosis, obesity, possibly Alzheimer's disease, uh, rheumatoid arthritis, uh, and other complications around the body. What we know for sure is that infective endocarditis, which is caused by uh, the bacteria, certain streps with, that are in the mouth, um, and really the only way to avoid having this, this condition up uh, form in, in the body is to manage the bacteria in the mouth very, very well. So cleaning the mouth very, very well. Otherwise, we'll have these bacteria grow on, on the valves or, or in the vessels uh, around the heart. Certainly, we know that there is a bidirectional relationship with cardiovascular disease. So all of those conditions like obesity, insulin resistance, type 2 di diabetes, and so on, uh, it's bidirectional, so both the, the disease will make the, the periodontal disease worse and the periodontal disease will also make the, the disease worse. And that happens because the bacteria make lipopolysaccharides, so a type of toxin, and that travels around the rest of the body, causes inflammation, uh, and then you know can cause gut dysbiosis as well. Then the, the LPS and the whole bacteria, as they travel around the body, they can lodge in different parts of the body. They can lodge in the blood vessels, which is endothelial disease, uh, or they, they can, they can uh, help to cause inflammation, which is atherosclerotic lesions, um, and cause uh, other kind of issues related to cardiovascular disease. In the case of... Um, Venous thromboembolisms, peripheral arterial disease, stroke, um, coronary artery stenosis, carotid artery stenosis, for instance, all of these conditions tend to be worsened by at least uh, twenty percent or so. Um, and certainly, you know, the the 
the more we can improve the, the oral health of the, the mouth, the less we're going to have these kind of complications in the rest of the body. Hypertension is something else that is, is going to be made worse by, by, by the bacteria. Um, in moderate severe uh, gum disease, it's by about 22%, nearly 50% in, this, in the severe cases. And we can see a, a measurable increase in the, both the systolic and diastolic pressures. And it's not just a, one type of bacteria, it's a range of different bacteria. And certainly if, if those, if that community of bacteria is, is increased, then there's a, a high likelihood of increase in, in the blood pressure as well. These are the, the current recommendations by the European Federation of Periodontology and the World Heart Federation. What they say is that anyone who has been diagnosed with any form of cardiovascular disease should have their oral health checked. They should be looked after by an oral health practitioner to make sure that um, the, the oral health of the mouth is not going to contribute further to, to the, the disease process. So with with um with gum disease and diabetes, again, we know it's it's bidirectional. We know that because of the changes that that happen and the lipid metabolism um, and more uh, sugars that that are that are that are circulating in the blood, that can affect uh, the bacteria that that's in the mouth. And then as a result of of the the bacterial overgrowth, then we have more endotoxins like LPS and and others traveling around the rest of the body using systemic inflammation and then um, resulting in, in 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 blood vessel problems in in circulatory problems so periodontal disease in pregnancy um, again if the if there is uh, these inflammatory markers being increased then we know that there's an increased likelihood of having uh, problems like preeclampsia, gestational diabetes, and then possibly preterm birth, low term, low birth weight babies and early pregnancy loss. And the, the, the way that we try and manage this, this problem is by treating this condition as, as early as possible. Um, ideally, even, you know, prenatally before the, the, the mother uh, gets pregnant, um, because we know that if, if we if if we try and treat these changes later in the pregnancy, we we don't have uh, as as good an, an outcome. So periodontal disease and 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 gut health uh, certainly there seems to be a relationship where if we have the bacteria in the mouth overgrowing and certain species of bacteria like P. gingivalis, um, AA, F. nucleatum. T. denticola and so on, then as those bacteria travel to the gut, and then for any reason, if the gut lining is disrupted through either genetics or medications, alcohol, smoking, and so on, those that allows the bacteria from the mouth to then travel into the deeper layers of, of the gut. And then as the immune system strikes to, to target those bacteria, we start to have inflammation in those deeper layers of, of the gut, causing intestinal inflammation, and then you know it starts to affect the the the, the processes that the the gut is is trying to 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 do. So here we have um, an example of, of how uh, the bacteria can can lead to changes in, in the macrophages, changes in in the antibodies. Um, and all the cytokines that are, that are released, and we start to see uh, that inflammation within the deeper layers of, of the gut. Here's a recent example of um, an NFL player that, that passed away because of uh, bacteremia. Um, he, he was intubated, and um, because the, the oral bacteria traveled into the lungs, um, unfortunately, he he died. So the the current thinking is that if you can reduce the amount of bacteria that that's in the mouth, then you can reduce the, the rates of of aspiration pneumonia, uh, reduce um, ICU mortality, 
uh, and and less likely to to need mechanical ventilation. So with, with uh, gum disease and cancer, we certainly know that there is a, um, a, a a risk with poor oral health and pancreatic cancer. Um, bacteria like Prevotella and Treponema uh, are going to increase your your um, likelihood of things like uh, squamous cell carcinomas um, of metastases to to the lymph nodes. Uh, Overall increases in bacteria is going to lead to poorer prognosis, and then there's you know various numbers of, of bacteria which, which seem to be related to esophageal and gastrointestinal cancers. So things like smoking, um, uh, chewing betel nut, um, reducing alcohol, those are all things that that are going to uh, try and um, moderate that that the the, the risk of cancer. Um. Gum disease and Alzheimer's. Well, we know that the um, the specific type of uh, LPS uh, it has been detected in in the brain. That we're going to show neurodegeneration and uh, amyloid beta uh, proteins. Um, you know, when we uh, when we introduce them in in the case of of um, uh, mice, we we can have that kind of effects directly as a result. Um, Peach and Javalis, um, and the ginger pains that are formed, they they directly will cause these amyloid proteins. And so if if we have all this excessive activation of the, the microglia uh, within the brain, then we're going to have all of this pro-inflammatory reactions, these um, uh, reactions which were going to cause neuroinflammation and then subsequently make the, the, the brain more susceptible to deterioration and uh, dementia and Alzheimer's disease. We also see that in rheumatic disorders that uh, that the, the looking for certain bacteria can be used as a, as a diagnostic marker. Uh, and that certain bacteria seem to have a very high relationship with, um, with uh, rheumatic disorders. So we're talking about rheumatoid arthritis, but Sjogren's as well as uh, systemic lupus erythematosus as as well. So the the more you can you can reduce the the the, the numbers of bacteria in the mouth, the less likelihood you're going to have with these kind of complications. Uh, this is Professor Trevor Marshall, an autoimmune researcher, and this is um, a comorbidity. Uh, graph a picture which looks at the relationships of of certain autoimmune conditions and their relationships to each other. So so you can see that they definitely have lots of of comorbidities, and certainly uh, what what they're thinking is is that when you have a certain amount of 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 bacteria above a certain threshold. Uh, these certain combinations are going to lead to different kinds of dysfunction. So as you can see, A and B leads to dysfunction X and, and others are going to lead to dysfunction Y. Just from the, the, the transcription um, and, and the expression of uh, the bacteria and, and what they, they do in the body is, is going to cause those problems. So the, the ways that the, the bacteria can, can travel around the body we know that it can travel through the blood. Uh, certainly, if if the the gums are bleeding, um, it's going to go directly into the blood. Uh, sublingually, it can go into the blood system as as well. You're going to cough and and, and breathe that into into the to the lungs, and so it can it can travel to the lungs that way. You're also going to swallow at least a hundred million back bacteria a day, and so that's going to go into your gut system that's going to seed the, 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 the bacteria in the gut. And the bacteria aren't going to necessarily be destroyed by, by the acids are there. And there's, there's studies to show that the, the neutrophils can actually ingest the, the bacteria and then transport it to other parts of, of the body as well. And so then in cases like sleep apnea, we're going to have a, a leaky blood brain barrier. And so the, the, uh, the bacteria that are traveling through the bloodstream can travel into the brain. And we, as, as I've said, 
in dementia, Alzheimer's, we see bacteria, uh, spirochetes, uh, and other types um, actually within the, the, the brain itself. Uh, we know that if, if with the, the immune system, as the, the bacteria get picked up by the lymphatics, that it, it can be trained within the, within the bone marrow system. And um, as myopolysis happens, we have then the, these circulating immune system cells, which can react to different parts of the body, endothelial dysfunction, which, as, as we know, can cause hypertension, atherosclerosis, it can cause uh, joint problems like in um, rheumatic arthritis and then inflammatory bowel disease like Crohn's or ulcerative colitis. I don't want to talk too much about viruses, but it certainly looks like herpes simplex, Epstein-Barr virus. It can be a, 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 a leading cause of some of the, the problems that, that we're, we're seeing. Um, and... We know that if uh, the, the parents are, have periodontal disease, that they can pass those to, to their children, both in the way that they feed uh, their, their children, the, the saliva transfer, certainly higher with, with the mother as opposed to other carers. Uh, as soon as, as the child gets their adult teeth, then we really can see a, a, an increase in the, the to, bacteria that are very typical of, of gum disease. So this is my colleague, Dr. Yu Wing Chu, and he says that the, the, the best uh, practitioners are the, are the ones that prevent the, the disease, the better practitioners are the ones that manage it early, and the good doctors are the ones that, that treat it uh, as early as, as possible. So Ideally, prevention is, is the best way to, to try and prevent on any of the complications that we're, we're going to have around the body. So in, in dentistry, we, we typically will try and uh, classify the disease. So we have two things that we call staging and grading. So staging is how bad is the disease and where is the disease and how has it damaged the, the body or, or the mouth. Uh, and grading is how likely is the, the disease to pro progress um, and, you know, um, I, what are the factors that are going to make it worse? So the ways that we do that, we, we have measurement tools like um, uh, a periodontal probe, and we use that to measure pocket depth and, and how much of the, the bone has been lost, um, how much recession there is. Is there bleeding? Is the tooth moving? And do, do you have buildup on, on the teeth? And we have very many uh, types of uh, radiology that we do, and we can use AI as well now, And but we have some very clever ways that we can we can look at the, the damage that, that has been caused to, to the teeth and around the mouth. And, you know, we can use comb beams and other advanced techniques to, to see the, the damage. But really, all of this is, is historical. This is after the damage has been caused. Um, the, the critical thing for us is try and predict when uh, the disease is going to progress and, and, and who, who is at risk and how can we minimize that risk for, for these, these individuals. So we've tried to look at, at different biomarkers, um, and currently there there is no FDA or TGA approved uh, marker for for any of these uh, diseases. But typically, we we try and look at at host um, uh, biomarkers like IL one beta uh, matrix metalloproteinases uh, and microbial biomarkers. We can we can actually measure the the different types of bacteria that that are in the mouth, and the good thing about that is if we can if we can do that successfully, then we can really quantify and and decide who is at risk, especially you know if it's related to the the a uh, certain threshold or above a certain threshold, then then we can see disease. And the ideal biomarkers are really going to tell us um, uh, how at risk a, a person is, and if we can do that very quickly, if we can do it cheaply, if we can do it in in the in the dental clinic then we're going to have the, the, the best outcomes for our patient. So there's all sorts of things that we're trying to do. We're trying to um, uh, improve our measurement tools, improve the, the, 
the radiography that we can do, um, have have assays that that are in the in the dental office, and so that's going to to slowly improve over time. We can use some very advanced um, omics, so looking at at um, at how the the bacteria uh, cause increase in metabolites, uh, increase certain types of of uh, transcription within within the body. Um, those can all be very, very helpful. And we're starting to see if, if we can uh, have an individual that we can then send to a lab and we can we can get some very interesting results. But again, this is time consuming. It's, ex it's expensive and this is better applied on a, uh, on a, a epidemiological sort of basis on a population sort of basis as, as opposed to the individuals but but certainly it can be very helpful what we're finding that one of the reasons we we've had so much trouble in in uh, coming up with a solution is that often we didn't even understand what healthy was so our our definition of, of what was healthy tended to be biased because we, for instance, used uh, dental students that, that you know, should have been um, brushing well, should have been knowing what they, they have to do to look after their health. And we use that as, as a marker for periodontal health. Uh, but that's not very true. So it was found that, that um, even dental students would have a dysbiotic biofilm, which can uh, precede the, the presence of, of, a, of a disease or, or clinical signs of an illness by many months or even years. And so we had a distorted vision of what our, our health was. So not trying to teach you dentistry, but when we have a, a patient that, that's healthy, they can, they can um, have gum, uh, they can have gingivitis, which is inflammation of the gums. And that seems to be a reversible process. So if you can stay within this this area here, then then you you're going to to be able to maintain health. But once a gingivitis patient progresses to become a periodontitis patient, and, and they have advanced signs of 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 bone loss and disease, then really the, you can never go back. You can only uh, either be a, a stable patient or an uh, or uh, an unstable patient, and so that that has has been the the, the thinking. Um, so what happens is uh, on on the left hand side here we have the bacteria that's in the mouth, and they will affect the 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 immune system. But uh, when it's disorganized, it doesn't affect it very much. It's only when they start to uh, help each other out, they they start to uh, provide for instance, food for each other, that they, they can start to uh, to nourish each other and then create a community. And then once they there's some key pathogens which act basically act as gang leaders, they can start to dysregulate the immune system, lead to changes within the immune system, make the overgrowing of the bacteria, uh, overgrowing of of bacteria that will cause problems and then lead to disruption uh, and damage to, to the tissues of the body. So with within um, the, the microbiome, um, things like how well we're cleaning, our diet, whether we smoke, have, have um, antibiotics and other medications, genetics, these are all things that are going to cause dysbiosis of the, the microbiome. And when that happens, then we are going to allow the bacteria to overgrow and then increases our risk of both problems that happen in the mouth, but also the, the problems that happen the rest, around the rest of the body. So it's not that the bacteria in the mouth actually cause the disease, but you know, if a if an individual is susceptible to to a, a disease or the disease process has already started, then certainly the inflammation, the bacteria that are traveling to those organs can make the, the problem worse. And we've seen that uh, we've talked about you know heart disease and cancer, and you know in this case we, we're seeing it in COVID as well. We know that uh, in in 
patients with, with gum disease that they have increased levels of IL-6 and so the inflammation is, is increased and so that they have a higher uh, number of, of uh, lung complications and that they they are more at risk of of um, intubation for for ICU admission and 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 death as well. So what is um, what is the bacteria that we're talking about? So you can see a number of different bacteria there. There's there's uh, there's cocci there. There's bacilli there, which are those rods. And then we we have others that are which are uh, wiggly that that look uh, like spirals, um, like the, the spirochetes. So the spirochetes um, are quite unique in that they're, they're easily identifiable from, from all, all the others. And the spirochetes, they, they form three major genera. Uh, the, the one that we know most is the treponema. Treponema pallidum is, is what causes syphilis, um, but the other treponema can cause periodontal disease, early implant failure, the Borrelia is, is what causes Lyme disease and relapsing fever. And Leptospira is what causes leptospirosis, which is the, the mouse plague that happened in, in the country. And certainly there, there seems to be a relationship with Alzheimer's and, and, and Parkinson's as well. Um, so in, if, if you think that um, syphilis is... is uh, is something from the past, then you're very much mistaken because syphilis has been increasing since the 1950s. There's just been a six-fold increase in, in Australia uh, over the last 15 years. In Queensland, uh, five babies were born with congenital syphilis last year and four, four of those babies died. So it's certainly something that all first world countries uh, are, are dealing with. And that that is the... Um, the, the treponema, so that's the, the spirochete. So why are we looking at the, the spirochetes? It's because they tend to be a late colonizer. So that means that they uh, only appear after uh, some of the early colonizers like the streptococci and, strepto and staphylococci have appeared um, after the prevotella and some of those others like Physobacterium nucleatum are there. And then it's only then that we start to see the bad ones like P. gingivalis, AA, um, and Trimbonema debticola, which, which is the spirochete. So with since uh, it's about 2015, the, the paper was published showing that spirochetes and looking at your white blood cells can act as a, a biomarker for, for um, infection. Um, and we can use it to, to look at patients that are like, likely to need um, further treatment in terms of, of periodontal disease. So we can look at the, the biofilm uh, in the mouth in, in different ways. So here, here's a macroscopic view of, of, of the biofilm, and, and it looks like you can see that yellowishness uh, on, on the teeth, and, and that's that's the biofilm that's, that's built up. And when we look at it with a, with the dye that we apply to, to the teeth, we can see much more clearly. You can see... Uh, the, the position of them, you can see the thickness of them. And this gives us a, an indication of where we're going to have a problem with, with tooth decay, with uh, early um, uh, demineralization of the teeth, where the, the bacteria are going to overgrow and cause implant uh, and gum complications. So one of the ways that we can remove this this um, uh, this biofilm is, is through... Uh, air polishing devices like like the airflow we have this oh, excuse me we have uh, this system which can can target the the oral microbiome uh, this this biofilm layer and and remove the, the this biofilm layer from 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 the teeth and from from underneath the, the gums uh, this is um, a quote by Bradley Bale uh, a a cardiac physician who says all good health starts with with the mouth and these are some of my colleagues uh, on on the uh, on the on the bottom here this is Bradley Bell in the middle and Professor Tom Larkin on the left hand side a, a colleague of mine who started the the Larkin protocol 
Um, but the, the book Beat the Heart Attack Gene was written um, and talks about the causes of, of inflammation within the body and how we as, as dentists can look after periodontal disease and dontic disease, which is root canals and root canal problems and obstructive sleep apnea. And this is their second book, Healthy Heart, Healthy Brain, which really uh, gives us a, a clue as, as to, to what happens when we, we have a, a healthy lifestyle. So as dentists, we, we, we're always looking for this, which is, um, which is signs of, of gingivitis and, and early disease. And then as it progresses and we, we have uh, damage to, to the supporting structures of the teeth and we have advanced disease, we start to have uh, bone loss, we have um, a lot of inflammation of, of the gums and recession. When we look at x-rays, it looks like the teeth are about to fall out, and, and that's, that, that's because uh, the bone, the supporting structures around the teeth are, are no longer strong enough to, to support the teeth, and the teeth become wobbly and can fall out. So that's periodontal disease. Here we have endodontic disease, which is... Um, uh, which is we have those abscesses which form around teeth. Uh, so an infection that forms as a, often the bacteria travel um, into, into the tooth and affect the, the root canal system. We can use our x-rays and, and determine you know, where, where that, that infection is around the, the apex of, of the tooth. And we also can look at obstructive sleep apnea when um, the airway isn't large enough to, to support um, uh, you know, comfortable and quiet breathing. And, and as the, 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 the patients are unable to breathe, they stop breathing, they have um, increased inflammation, uh, and then the increased uh, hypertension, and you know, the, um, uh, that can lead to just overall increases in inflammation around the body. But this is... Um, this is using the phase contrast microscope that we have, and we can start to see uh, the bacteria that, that are in the mouth at a microscopic level. So we can take a little sample like, like this, put it onto a microscope slide, and one minute later we have a sample that we, we, can, we can look at. And here we've got an uh, example of, of, a, of a healthy biofilm. We have very little moving. We have no white blood cells. Um, very little going on, as opposed to, to this dysbiotic biofilm, which has uh, white blood cells, a lot of spirochetes there, a lot of activity. We can even see some, some parasites uh, hanging around there. So using th this microscopic view, we can then take um, an individual and say, well, this child has swollen tonsils. What's his bacteria like? We can see a lot of spirochetes there. We can see a lot of activity. And we can see that he hasn't been, been brushing his teeth. Here's uh, an example of um, a tooth that, that has started to decay. And we can see a lot of, of, of bacteria on, on this patient's teeth, which is starting to make the acid that, that, that caused uh, the problem and demineralization of the teeth. Is an example of a patient that has tooth sensitivity and, and toothache because of this bacteria that, that's, that's running around um, all over. This is a case of recession um, where a patient wasn't brushing very well around the gum line and we can see that uh, he has a lot of, of, of bacteria around. Uh, a lot of white blood cells, which is an indication of inflammation. And uh, that, that really, uh, um, the body is trying to protect itself and, and the gum shrinks away to, to try and uh, move away from, from those bacteria. It's a case of, of halitosis and bleeding gums. So we have bad breath as a result of the, the bacteria and many, many different types of bacteria um, living underneath the gum and not being removed uh, effectively and causing inflammation. Here's a case of gingivitis where um, you know, we have bleeding of, of, of the gums. And even at this stage, we can see that there's a, a severe spirochetosis. So we have a lot of spirochetes, um, but lots of other bacteria hanging around, which are really going to increase the, this um, 
this patient's risk of, of future uh, gum disease. Is an established patient with, with gum disease, and you can see how, how poorly they, they are, are cleaning around some of those back teeth. And, and with the bleeding that, that we see around those teeth, that, that's really uh, an indicator that uh, it's an advanced process that, that's happening um, and, and needs to be dealt with this as soon as possible, possibly with, with, with lasers and, and other treatments that, that we can do. Is an example of, of a patient who, who has a root canal or needs a root canal. And this is the, the many, many types of bacteria, but again, very small bacteria, which typically are able to penetrate into the tooth, cause problems um, and cause inflammation within the tooth, which will result in the root canal. A lot of bacteria around this, this um, this patient's mouth, who who's already we've already taken out the tooth, and the patient's ready for uh, we we thought was ready for an implant, and and when we check the, the the microbiome, we see that it's there's far too much bacteria there, and we can see um, lots and lots of spirochetes, which are which are going to delay the the um, the the, uh, the implant placement. So we need to get them the mouth healthy before we start to place this implant. Otherwise, it's going to have problems as well. And the patient doesn't even have to, to have teeth. So this is a patient with only dental implants. You can see that the spirochetes are, are still there. Um, and in the case where patients have periodontal disease and the teeth are removed and, and the implants are placed straight away, that's a that's a very good way to to cause early implant loss. Is a mother with with a high decay rate, lot lot of spirochetes there, and you know two of her three children have very very poor oral hygiene, lots of decay, and and the sim very similar problems to to the mother. This is an example of a sample we took from a patient's nose. This is the, the, the candida um, that's there, so a fungal infection. And as I said, the, the relationship with, with certain um, bacteria, uh, this, is a, uh, this is a periodontal patient, so have more of these type of pathogenic bacteria related to, to gum disease, so P. gingivalis here. This is at 10 times the threshold, so way above the, the threshold for, for disease. Uh, this is the spirochete Chapmanemba denticola. So you, you can see again, more than five times the, the, the threshold there. And this is a cancer patient um, who has other types of opportunistic bacteria here. Um, Fusobacteria nucleatum at, at very high levels. And we can start to see um, that their normal flora is not the, the usual type that we would find. So. That's that's something that we need to correct and, and Im improve for the long term so that well, I mean, once this, this patient has this cancer treated, we, we certainly want to prevent the, the the next cancer from happening as well. So dentists are certainly guilty of of um uh creating problems which within the mouth because we, we're placing dentures, we're placing implants that are additional surfaces that uh uh bacteria can grow on but you have to remember that it, it, it's it's not just on, on the teeth themselves it's 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 on the palate it's on the cheek it's on the tonsils all these on the tongue all of these different areas uh, you know will have different bacteria but you know, they they provide a reservoir for the bacteria to grow onto the rest of of the mouth so how can we we try and reduce the number of of bacteria within the mouth? Well, ozone is one of the things that we've we've seen make a make a huge difference. Ozone is is used in in all uh, water treatment facilities around the world because it's antibacterial, antiviral, antifungal. It's also anti-inflammatory and can help with wound healing. And it works because it it's a, a very strong oxidant. Um, it has this hydroxyl group, which is very unstable and can uh, um, kill the, the, the bacteria and viruses. 
um, but then it breaks down to water. So, so that means it's, it's very useful for us. So in the dental office, we can use it to, to prevent the, the bacteria forming inside the dental water lines. We can use it as a, as a preoperative uh, treatment rinse. We can use it within the, the air polishing devices that we use. We can use it in, in the dental lasers. And then we have it with in concentrated forms that come, coming out of uh, various tap systems. And we even have uh, a take-home system that the patient can now use at home um, and, and rinse with, with at home. But within the, the polishing devices we have, we, we can, we can um, have this burst of ozone around the mouth, on the teeth, on implants, to, to really uh, give the, the, the bacteria a massive hit, reduce the, the number of bacteria, we can use it uh, around implants with, with our dental lasers as well and really drop the, the amount of, um, of bacteria that, that exists around these implants and, and problematic implants to, to help with, with the healing. And we've seen that we can, we can, you can use it uh, even just alone. So this, this is during COVID and, and this patient, I, we, I wasn't able to do any sort of treatment for them but told them to, to use the, the ozone tumbler. And after three months, we saw quite a dramatic change in, in the bacteria that, that's in the mouth. This is a patient that we, we recently placed an implant into, and, and this is before I started with the, the microscope, and I could see that uh, soon after placing it, um, we had this, this infection. And so we treated it with, with the laser, with uh, the air polishing, and you know, um, just a, a month later, we we made a dramatic difference in the in the the amount of of spirochetes due to the amount of inflammation that that's in this in this patient's mouth. Here's a patient that came to us, and every single tooth in his mouth was was bleeding. Uh, as soon as he he touched the toothbrush to his teeth, it, it would bleed. And you can see that he he isn't a, a, a good brusher. There's a lot of of areas which he's he needs to improve his brushing. And so as soon as we would do the clean, he would have this intense amount of, of bleeding. And so with one of the the the, the tests that we, we can do, we can look at the, the different types of bacteria that are in the mouth. And in, in this case, 10 out of the 11 bacteria within his mouth were above the threshold. And it took us a while, but um we 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 pretty much got there. We're, so over two years later, we uh, are seeing this is how he presented into the clinic. He is uh, inflammation. As soon as he he was in the office, you can see that when he presented two years later, it's a dramatic difference there. But you can see after we've done the clean, on the left hand side, there's a lot of bleeding. Whereas um, whereas now with the the treatment. Uh, there's there's almost no signs of inflammation at all, and when we've retested him, we can see that all of the the bacteria were under threshold, and many of the the, the pathogenic bacteria are, are no longer even detectable. So, very very um, good result for him. And this is how he started on on the left hand side. Uh, you can see the spirochetes. You can see how how busy the um, the biofilm looks compared to to the right hand side. You know, much quieter, uh, a lot less debris, um, no visible spirochetes there. So, um, quite a dramatic difference. Here's a patient that came to us for a periodontal consult, uh, and the patient. Uh, was wondering how long it would be before we'd have to take out all her teeth and and replace them with with dentures. So the the top the the, the two lines there represent where, where the bone should be and where the bone is is now. And you can see again, this is a patient that hasn't been brushing very well. A lot of inflammation, a lot of bleeding around uh, the the teeth. But throughout the course of treatment. We've all of those areas that are green are areas where the pocketing has reduced, where we've improved the the, the health of of the gums. When we test the the bacteria that that's in the mouth, 
on the top you see eight above threshold and on the lower we see four above threshold so still quite a bit of improvement to to go but we've managed to to keep the patient's teeth she hasn't lost any teeth um you know in in the in the in the in the years that we've treated her so this is how she started with a huge amount of bacteria in the mouth uh, a lot of white blood cells a lot of uh, bacteria running around and um, and more recently much improved low levels of of, of spirochetes of white blood cells uh, and motility so quite a, a nice improvement with her and this is a case of an implant that we placed 10 years ago and we can see Recently, they've had some, some bone loss in, in this area. And when we have a look at the slide, we can see that uh, around the, the left-hand side here, we can start to see these, these um, large structures. This, this is actually uh, an amoeba. So this is a parasite that, that's in the biofilm. And when we look at the uh, at the result of, of treatment, we can we can see that there is a lot less the bacteria in the mouth. There's none of those amoeba running around. This is after a course of antibiotics, and if if we speed up the uh, the slides and, and use a time lapse, you can start to see the the amoeba that that are running around. So this is a sign of advanced infection when the, the these amoeba around and they they consume the white blood cells and, and reduce the body's ability to fight off the bacteria. And so you typically have a lot of these this overgrowth of of, of pathogenic bacteria in, in the mouth. This is a time lapse, so one second equals one minute. But this this next one is is a real time. So these are these are trichomonads, these these are um, parasites that, that, that run around in, in in the mouth. So I've got to I've got to move the slide around to to really chase them and 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 view them. But again, another sign of a very advanced in, infection in in the in the mouth gum disease. And the problem is that that we can't just use tooth brushing or, or the air polishing alone because a lot of these bacteria have the ability to penetrate into the gum structure into the epithelium uh, and pass around to the to the rest of the body so you, you we need to use other methods like the the lasers um, to try and reduce and kill the bacteria within these structures and remove that diseased um, epithelium so then there's techniques like this which is uh um, which we use a chromophore, uh, uh, and then we hit it with with the light, and then we we can kill the the bacteria. We can use others like this heat treatment with with special dyes, and so that's also going to reduce the amount of, of bacteria that that are around and and help to uh, remove that the, the the diseased layer around around the teeth. So are we actually helping our patients? Well, we, we know that we can reduce the C-reactive protein um, and the IL-6 markers if, if, we, if we use that as a biomarker. Uh, we have reduction in um, endothelial uh, inflammation, in systemic inflammation. We don't know if, if for sure we can, we can help with blood pressure. That seems to be inconclusive. But you know, at the very least, we're helping our patients with their with their, their risk of, of tooth decay, of, of gum disease. Um, and it seems to be able to help with um, improving the biomarkers for, for diabetes as well. So we certainly, um, more research needs to be done, but hopefully it's, it's in the right direction. So if you're a practitioner, um, as a, as a dentist, we, we write these reports. We will write to you and tell you uh, what is happening in, in your patient's mouth. 
what is the treatment plan that we've put forward and how we, we can improve the, the health uh, for your patient. And so these are things that um, all patients should be doing. All patients should be should be brushing with an electric toothbrush for at least two minutes. An electric toothbrush brushes much, much better than, than a manual toothbrush. There needs to be some sort of interproximal cleaning. Typically, flossing is not good enough. You, you really should be using an interproximal brush or some sort of oral irrigator that shoots the water in between the teeth. Uh, at, at the least, we need to have a professional um, cleaning um, with some sort of uh, air polishing device that concentrates on removing the biofilm um, and doing that minimum twice a year. But for implant patients, we might see them three or four times a year. And if we do see signs of dysbiosis, so if, if we, you know, you really need to be seeing a practitioner that, that has the phase contrast microscope, and then when we see that dysbiosis, we can we can say, okay, this is a case where we might need ozone or hydrogen peroxide or some other type of, of mouth rinse. Um, we can use other techniques like it, like tongue scraping, or maybe we need to, to look at um, antiparasitics or antibiotics to reduce the number of parasites to, to, to in the mouth. And other tips for, for optimal general health, we, we definitely should be minimizing the amount of simple sugars that, that we, we take, simple carbohydrates. Um, definitely don't smoke or vape. We know that long-term the consequences are, are, are very bad when, when you do smoke. Um, alcohol in moderation, stay hydrated, try and keep your stress levels down. Stress um, and mental health can, can have a huge impact on, on um on the health of the rest of the body. Um, eat, eat whole foods as much as possible and, and less minimum um, and less highly processed foods. Eat more plant, uh, plant-based diet, have a regular restorative sleep, try and exercise uh, and maintain a, a, a healthy blood pressure. And if, um, if you are interested, I can send you some of the, the papers that I've written. This is on you know, per implant health and the microbiome. And I've written some other papers as well. If you're on Facebook, join us on Hygiene Hackers and you can see all of the, the bacteria that we, we, we find on a daily basis and talk about and, and how we, we can try and improve the oral health of, of our patients. So really hope you you found that to be useful and hopefully you can see how the bacteria that, that are in the mouth can, can really cause problems uh, around the, the, the rest of, of the body. If you are interested, if you're a dentist, um, look us up um, uh, at the, the larkinprotocol.com. Um, otherwise, please contact me um, and we can, we can help you look after your patients or, or if you're a patient yourself, how we can we can help manage uh, the disease, or at least try and be preventive, um, and and prevent the complications from from happening in the future, and and improve your overall health. Thank you very much.